Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Zero Trust Security, supporting a CARTA approach to, with continuous monitoring. Um, glad you're all here and I am pleased to introduce today's speaker, which is Christopher Lillian Stolpe. Uh, Christopher is the original architect behind Pro Tigera's uh, Project Caligo. He speaks at over 60 meetups a year and is educating and people on networking and network security for modern applications. He also consults with Tigera's enterprise clients on security and compliance for their applications, helps them to achieve their goals. Before I hand the webinar over to Christopher, I have a few housekeeping items to cover uh, on this presentation and the webinar platform. Um, first off, today's webinar uh, is being recorded and will be available on demand immediately after the live session is over. It will be accessible through the same Bright Talk link that you have. And um, also in the uh, attachments and links section of the interface, um, uh, we have placed several um, valuable documents. There's a link to um, a uh, on-demand webinar we did with Atlassian and AWS, where Atlassian was a, uh, the case study, um, which is a great webinar. So I would, uh, you know, Atlassian really talks in depth about how they approach um, Kubernetes security and being in the cloud. It's a great webinar, so uh, check that out. We also have a, a Kubernetes. Uh, installation guide, how to install security um, and compliance with Kubernetes, and a few other documents. So please go ahead and check those out and, uh, and use them. Um, so the other thing is we'd love to hear from you t t uh, today during today's presentation. So if you have a question for our speaker, uh, please feel free to ask it through the, uh, the, the questions tab. Um, and and uh, feel free to ask those questions in real time as you have them, and we will try to answer them in real time so the, that they are relevant to the question and the topic and that everything makes sense. Uh, that being said, we will also take questions as they come and then uh, reserve time at the end for a full Q&A session should we need it. Okay? Well, with that, uh, with that all said, let me hand things over to Christopher. Christopher. All right, thank you, Michael. And I, let me just add something on to, to what Michael said there about uh, asking for, for your questions and et cetera. Uh, we would also love your feedback. So we talk about quite a few different topics in this webinar series, um, everything from operational um, concerns and, and, and best practices to you know security topics and, and compliance topics. We take different views on them because we've got a, a, a sort of a, a very diverse audience set here. Uh, however, you know this is really for you guys and gals. So please let us know what type of topics you like, which which webinars you've liked, and which ones not so much, uh, so we can you know be sure that we're providing you things that you're looking for. So. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I can talk about a number of things. Um, so I'd love to get your input on, on you know, things you'd like to hear about. So with that said, let's turn to today's topic, which, as Michael said, is CARTA, um, uh, and, and specifically CARTA around monitoring and visibility. So CARTA is a model, uh, just as a quick recap, we went over this last week as our last webinar as well. Um, it is uh, Gartner's uh, model on how you implement and drive a zero trust secured network security model. Um, so this goes into sort of a DevOps and analyze approach. So uh, you can see the classical DevOps infinity model there at the bottom, and there is the you know this. Uh, Risk analysis and thrust, uh, trust and threat assessment. Uh, Gartner doesn't talk about the trust, but really it is. Uh, there's a, a threat assessment, uh, uh, risk as, as well as as trust uh, that runs sort of as part of this process, right? So it takes what's coming out of operational experience and then runs that through your trust and threat model and risk model. And then that's used to reinform your development and build model that that you then go back into into deployment. So it's you know they, they sort of draw it. Gartner sort of draws it as a as a as as three separate engines. Um, you know I think there if you think about a DevOps model, um, any there's lots of things that inform the build or the dev process um, that aren't necessarily just cutting code, for example. 
so this is really just an extension or, or, or um, exposure of the kinds of things that you want to be thinking about in a DevOps model or a DevSecOps uh, model where uh, you're doing analysis of, of your, risk, your, your, your risk environment, your threat environment, your risk, your trust uh, environment that you're in, and, and then making adaptations as you need to. So, you know, go look at the Gartner stuff. Go go look at our previous webinars. But basically, what we want to talk about is, with regards to Carta, one of the things that Carta talks about is visibility. How are you going to do this this iterative process? How are you going to inform your risk and your trust assessment? Unless you have visibility of what's actually going on in the infrastructure. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that now. You know, Kubernetes continuous monitoring. Um, and we've talked about this before in other guises, not necessarily in the in the CARTA guise, but it's good as a um, as a good level set. Currently, in the current pra industry practice is to use five tuple for network monitoring and logging. So that means that you're looking at the source desk address, source desk port, and protocol. You know, port. You know, TCP 443 from this IP address to this IP address. That is the classical network monitoring model today. That's the information we capture. How many bytes was it allowed? Was it denied? Was it ingress? Was it egress? But typically, that's the model that, of, of information we capture in a static environment. And I am going to put VMs in that static environment because VMs have much longer lifetimes. They live on calendar time, not on wall clock time. So for all intents and purposes, VMs are not ephemeral. They are fairly static. So in a fairly static environment, or in a very static environment, five tuple can work. It's, e it's relatively easy to map those IP addresses to the thing that was using that, connected to that IP address at that point in time, uh, DHCP logs, et cetera. So that's possible. As we go into uh, a more dynamic environment, containerized or, or microservices-based environment, say being driven by Kubernetes, where workloads now live on, on wall clock time, not calendar time, um, and particularly even stopwatch time, um, and IP addresses are not dedicated to functions, but IP addresses are simply a resource that is dynamically assigned and consumed by endpoints, then we have a problem with this model. This model no longer gives us visibility into what actually happened. The only anchor I've got, the label, the IP address, is ephemeral, and it's not tied to any one particular thing. Yes, I know a certain IP address, talk to another IP address on this port and protocol, but I have no idea what those IP addresses were at the point in time of the conversation. And what's more important, if I see the same IP address pair later on in my logs, I have no idea if those were the same or different things. Again, because I don't know uh, when IP addresses get reused, uh, et cetera. It could happen multiple times a day an IP address gets reused. We've talked about this before. Go back, look at some of our earlier webinars. Uh, but Logging is a problem using with IP address as the as the primary key. Um, so the other uh, issue we have with five tuple logging is it does nothing to say about what policies actually allowed or denied that traffic. So fine, let's let's say I can puzzle out what that thing was, and one of those things was a PCI workload, and one of those things was a non PCI workload, and I theoretically have a policy says PCI workloads shouldn't be able to talk to non-PCI workloads, but um, so I, I see it happened. But I have no idea in most common logging environments why that was allowed. You know, what policy allowed that traffic to flow? Um, you know, so obviously there's a policy leak. There's a policy misconfiguration or something's in the wrong priority, but we now have something that's allowing traffic that shouldn't be allowed have no way of knowing which actual policy allowed that traffic to flow. So uh, that means I can't prove my policies are actually being effective, um, other than my inference. So uh, what network flows need to include 
workload identity, and a lot of other metadata. That includes what policies allowed or denied the flow, what the actual things were, what their metadata state was, what labels they were bearing or annotations they were bearing, et cetera, what policy allowed them through, what namespaces they existed in, kind of endpoint. You need a lot more data being attached to these log records in order for the log to actually have meaning in any case, let alone a, a CARTA-style iterative um, DevSecOps cycle where you're doing a, a continual reevaluation of your threat and risk and, and policy models. Let's talk a little bit about policy. I've been talking about policy, and, and I, I didn't really introduce it. Um, again, this is a brief overview and a level set. Um, if you are interested in this, I believe you can look at the last CARTA talk of our last webinar. We talked about policy in relation to CARTA, and I've definitely talked about policy ad infinitum uh, on this webinar series in the past. Um, policy in Kubernetes and Tigera's solutions is based on intent. And that's there's an important fact there is that, that Tigera really helped inform the Kubernetes network policy model, but the concept of intent is things that are have a Bob trait should be able to things that talk to an Alice trait on port 443. That's intent. It's not being specific, it's not saying these IP addresses should talk to these IP addresses, 443. It's basically saying if this thing has the Bob trait attached to it, i.e. a label, or a label that indicates it has a, it's a Bob server, let's say, for example, um, should be able to allow traffic from Bob clients, i.e., you know, I used Alice earlier, but Bob clients on 443, that's an intent. Uh, we're not writing anything to the network. It's saying if there is a Bob server and a Bob client in the network, or a lot of them, then that communication should be allowed. So it's an intent-based model. Um, the key thing about do, if you do this right and you do your labeling right and your, your taxonomies of your, your, your schema for your labeling and, and annotations, et cetera, this actually allows you to categorize specific traffic flows based on their function and their endpoints. So you could say you can now start categorizing traffic as is it in stage dev or stage prod? Is it LDAP traffic between LDAP client and LDAP server? That's what I usually pick on. Or is it traffic between a front end uh, customer application front end and customer database record server? So you now start creating metadata labels on the things saying what they are, what functions they perform, or what roles they have, i.e. LDAP client, uh, customer database server, uh, et cetera. And then you can write pol intent policies as if you are a customer database, a customer front end server, you should, bang, you should be able to talk to the customer uh, database server. Uh, <coughs> and I now have a flow saying, well, this is customer database queries. So you can now classify the traffic as to its function, who's involved in the conversation, and why that was allowed. So your policies can now act as a proxy for the actual flows. If this was allowed by this policy, then you know uh, you can make a reasonable assumption that it, that traffic is, or at least mimicking the behavior <coughs> that that policy was defined for. Um, this is, the, <coughs> this is really the only thing that's going to work at scale. If we start thinking about the number of endpoints in a containerized microservice environment, a couple orders of magnitude more endpoints, they're much more dynamic, and almost all the traffic that was originally within your big monolithic app is now <coughs> east-west traffic between different microservices. So my flow, amount of flows I have going through the network are orders of magnitude more than I did before, 95% of them or more are probably east-west flows. So if I don't have some way of classifying and characterizing this before the flows actually happen, I have a very hard shot at ever actually making sense of the flow data that's being kicked out. So <coughs> if you start thinking about everything at scale is driven by policy, and policy allows us to uh, Characterize group and search, et cetera, through this through this large mass of data that's going to be pointed at you. Um, 
I'm not going to do much more about policy. Uh, it's important, but it's not just support important from uh, and point I want to make here. It's not just important from an enforcement standpoint, but also from a visibility standpoint. Um, Again, look at some of our earlier blogs if you want a more in-depth conversation about policy in Kubernetes. Uh, not that, not that button. Um, yeah, so we were supposed to be talking about visibility, right? So why are we talking about policy? Uh, as I said, these are really two sides of the same coin. If you do this right, the policy that you use to enforce is also the policy that allows you to make sense of the data in your logging and your visibility environment. So let's talk a little bit. I, I was talking a little bit about flow logs and that wonderful five tuple flow log that we've all grown up to love over decades that I just now told you is ugly and inefficient and inadequate in the extreme in a containerized environment. You know, those are inflammatory words. I'm trying to get someone to ask a question about that or say I'm wrong. But so if we take a look at VPC at regular flow logs. This happens to be an AWS VPC, but it, it's really somewhat um, irrelevant. What you see here is basically IP address talking to IP address on port. Uh, was it allowed? And the interesting thing about VPC flow logs it only shows you what was allowed, not what was denied. Um, but basically, I have no idea what those IP addresses are in a containerized environment. They're, they're ephemeral. Even more interesting in something like AWS, where the VPC flow logs only trigger when you are uh, exiting the host. So if you have traffic entirely within a host, say between two pods on the same host, that will never hit your flow logs. So Tiger has a solution for that in AWS, and it's coming in other public clouds, ESCE, and we've talked about that in the past as well. But you know, if, if even if we say these IP addresses here are the IP addresses of pods, not the IP addresses of hosts. It's still insufficient. Uh, so, what do you need to do? If you take a look at some of the flow logs that we can generate, the bottom level it shows you a little bit more detail. It shows you what kind of endpoint was it? A pod in Kubernetes? Was it a native host, a bare metal host? Was it an IP address range? Was it a um, v, uh, VM, etc.? What kind of endpoint was this thing on both the source and the desk? Uh, if it's in Kubernetes, what is the namespace of that that pod was in? You know, what namespace was this thing living in, which might indicate tenancy or or application group or something along those lines. However, you are planning on using namespaces. Then the actual immutable name of the endpoint, as per TSE, which comes from the orchestrator, is that doesn't change across history. So I know that this. For example, as you can see here, the access deployment, a pod associated with the access deployment and the rest of it's a unique identifier, was the source of the traffic. And it went through a given policy, and it had a certain set of labels on it, uh, which um, right now are shown by a dash because it's an aggregate list, but we could show all the labels. And then the same bits of data for the destination um, and then, you know, as I said in the middle, the policy that allowed or denied this. And then, was it allowed or denied? Was it blocked on in or allowed on ingress or egress, etc.? But I can now see very clearly who's talking to what over what policy. What policy? What definition of traffic allowed or denied that thing? I.e., it could be a, the policy could be PCI um, security model, and that would probably be an allow or a deny. I.e. Was it PCI to PCI or PCI to non-PCI? Uh, well, if it was denied and should have been allowed, I can see which policy matched the deny. You know, do I have a problem in my policy model? But I'm actually now seeing exactly what policies are being effective or being triggered by what flows in my network and what those flows actually are. So I now get a huge amount of data that now informs that introspection that I need to do as part of a continuous. Um, DevSecOps or, or CARTA style model. So you know, I can do this, I can continually watch this, I can look at audit this daily, weekly, monthly, whatever cycle you want to run at, but I can get a huge amount of data off of this. A little bit more of a breakdown on the policies. Um, we've been, you know, we'll not need to talk much more about this. I talked about some of those lines already, but there's a lot more data in here. 
than a uh, standard 5 tuple log. Once I have the data isolated by policy, I can now start doing interesting things. So I can now, for example, visualize all the flows in the network. That might be a very large amount of flows, so you should be able to scope it down by namespace or name, i.e. pod or deployment, allowed traffic versus denied traffic. But basically, I can actually visualize all the flows happening in your network today, whether they're allowed and denied, between what namespaces and what pods in those namespaces or physical hosts, et cetera. Um, the details of it, as you can see down there, you know, the, the packet rate, the, the data rate, the connection rate, uh, was it being allowed or denied, why it was being allowed or denied, which side did the denying, was it egress or ingress, all those things. So I now have a immediately visual visualization of what's going on. This is great for troubleshooting on other things. So I get an alert that says I'm getting denied traffic into, you know, customer database server. I can come here. I can flip on items to just show denied traffic uh, going to the customer database server, and I can see all the pods or all the sources that are sending traffic that's being denied to the customer database server. I can see the rate. I can see what they are. I can see the policy that's causing that, and that allows me to start going and doing some, some troubleshooting. But this also gives you long-term visibility. So if I can do this in real time, I can also pull the same kind of data out and make long-term models about how things are talking. So let's talk about that a little bit. The build-out just talks a little bit about what I, you drill in, you can filter by namespace, et cetera. Um, I want to go some. Uh, look, uh, I'm going to pass pass this for a minute. I want to go here first. Misordering of my slides. I apologize, and then I'll go back and talk about alerting. That same visualization data that you just saw can also be fed into like an Elastic, an EFK stack, or something equivalent, an Elk stack, an EFK stack, Splunk, Loggerly, whatever CM tools you might have. This is an example of the kind of stuff you can do with a EFK stack. If I have all of that rich data about all the connections, I can now start building compliance dashboards. I can say, all the workloads, did all the workloads that have PCI in their label space, did their traffic go through uh, an evaluation by the PCI policies I have or not? I start seeing if I have a policy leak. You know, did did, was I seeing PCI workloads trying to talk to non-PCI workloads that were being blocked, but that still might indicate I have either a bug or someone who's trying to do something that's unpleasant. So um, I can now start seeing and making those determinations. Now instead of like, oh, well, I'm getting a bunch of denied traffic, which is important or not, I can start seeing, oh, well, there's a bunch of denied traffic, and gee, that looks a lot like SSH door knocking onto my front front end. That happens all the time. I'm not really all that worried about it, but ooh, this is something in the PCI cluster that is actively trying to get connectivity to the outside world um, and is is you know is is probing around certain ports, etc. You know, this is PCI, this is more interesting to me and more of a potential threat or potential exfiltration attempt than um, the door knocking. So by having policy bedded to this, telling me what kind of traffic it is, where it's coming from, and where it's going to with real data, I can start saying what's real risk and what's not, what's a potential compliance problem and which which is not. Um, so um, and I guess we're hearing a little bit of an issue about audio cutting out. Um, it, are other people having problems? Uh, can people still hear me? Hey, Christopher, it's Michael. I don't think we have any issues with the audio. So if, if you are having issues with audio, there is a support um, icon down at the bottom right of your uh, screen for Bright Talk. You can, you can use that. Um, I wish I could help. It's kind of out of our hands. It's the Bright Talk platform. So, so, um, so you know, that so this starts giving you interesting things. And there's going to be other things we're going to be bringing in in Calico and in Tigera around automating some of this pattern detection, et cetera, again, based on this data set that's being generated. 
So stay tuned. We've got some interesting things coming up in the future. I go back. So now I've got an ability to, to evaluate what's going on, build compliance dashboards or threat dashboards, which inform CARTA. I also need to know real-time alerting. At the end of the day, I don't expect to have all of the NOC team, uh, monitoring team, sitting and staring at this and waiting for red lines to appear. That's not really an effective use of their time. So that same data source that's feeding this elastic style environment, this Fluent D elastic style environment, can also be used to feed Prometheus. Prometheus is a time series data store where you can trigger events based on changes in the time series database. So you can start creating error rates. And you can, for example, then create a, a, a Prometheus policy that says I'm going to fire off alerting if my SSH door knocking exceeds more than n attempts a minute across my cluster, but any attempted external connectivity from a PCI cluster immediately alerts. Might be an example. Or traffic between two regions that aren't supposed to be able to talk immediately alerts. So that can be done based on thresholds, high water, low water marks, etc. And then you can trigger alerts. Um, you can trigger alerts that uh, can be directed toward pager duty, to Slack, to email, to SMSs, what, whatever you might be using as a, your alerting mechanism. Um, so this gives you an immediate alerting. It's not quite the CARTA, uh, what CARTA is talking about. CARTA is talking about introspection as, as you know, uh, of the data over time. But you know, this is a key thing as part of a DevSecOps. You need to be able to get alerted when something bad is happening so you can start that cycle and fix it in short order. Um, so that's alerting um, more than visibility and traceability. But again, once I get an alert, I can then go in and look at that, those visualizations, go look in my, for example, EFK stack and search for that, those flows and, and figure out what's going on. So with that, I think you know, I have covered the topic um, at least at, at a high level. Um, we could have, in fact, we do have workshops where we spend a day with customers talking about their monitoring and alerting and, and introspection models, et cetera. Same thing for policy design, et cetera. So you know, this, this topic definitely can go much, much deeper. But this at least gives you an idea of some of the things you might want to look for as you start thinking about, you know, and again, I'm going to use DevSecOps because it's a more general term than CARTA, but part of that DevSecOps mode is you've got to go back and reevaluate what, just like DevOps in general, you have to reevaluate your security environment and decide what you changes you want or need to make in your next cycle through the dev process. So with that, if there are no other questions, uh, I'm going to turn it back over to Michael uh, and thank you for your time. And I'm going to drink yeah. a glass of water. Okay. Thank you, Christopher. Um, so if you do have any questions, um, please go ahead and ask them now. And while you are typing in any questions you may have, I'll just bring your attention to, as I mentioned in the beginning, um, we have uh, the AWS Atlassian Tiger webinar that you can go watch. Uh, there is a link there, hopefully. Uh, you can either copy or uh, click on that. And uh, also coming up next, um, every two weeks we do a webinar. And in two weeks we are doing another webinar which is um, on, um, it's, it's still around the area of CARTA and Zero Trust Security, but really we're focusing in on anomaly, anomaly, anomaly detection. If I can get anomaly. that out. Anomaly. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, not, not the movie with the, with the, with the French girl uh, that we're talking about, French woman. This is, um, this, this is an issue. This is an anomaly. So, um, yeah, so that's coming up in two weeks. Uh, and since you signed up for this webinar, you don't have to fill out any forms. You can just go to that webinar and say, I want to attend. So that's really super easy. So um, it's not looking like we have any questions. So um, I'm going to give it a, you know, another few more seconds. And um, if we don't, then um, it seems like we were perfectly clear, Christopher, and, and everyone got exactly what you're talking about. So, um, okay.
Well, hey, listen, thank you all for attending, and uh, we will see you in two weeks, and feel free to go to any of those links and attachments that I put into the, to the webinar interface and uh, watch either of these two webinars, okay? You guys have a great week. Thank you. Take care, everyone.